Uh, I thought long and hard about this one and, and trying to think about what kind of subjects were available. And each time it kind of came back to the same one. And it's all about finance and accounting because for people to come into my industry, they need to have an understanding of what a profit and loss statement is, what a balance sheet is and cash flow, that kind of thing. So you need to understand how a company is going to operate its finances, how it forecasts its finances for the future, that kind of thing. My day, I suppose like everybody else's, is split into two, morning and afternoon, but mine is a little bit different because I work for an American company and the people that I work with are typically between five and seven hours behind me. So first thing in the morning, it's usually catching up on any communications that have come through from my American colleagues, getting any quick wins and getting those out of the way. But the next thing that I usually use my mornings for is my creativity time because that's really when I'm more focused uh, because my job is about taking complex documentation and turning that into engaging learning content so I need to be quite creative so mornings are best for that and then when we do come into the afternoons that's when I'm usually having project meetings with my colleagues in America um, catching up on things updating on projects working out problems and challenges maybe that kind of thing and the final job that happens at the end of every day is planning for the next day i'm i'm somebody who needs to deal with lists and check things off so i need to be aware of what i've not managed to achieve today and then that forwards to the next day i need to think about what i've got to achieve the next day um communications I might need to pass over to US teams, that kind of thing. So, and it also just keeps me very organized for the next day. Main tasks, uh, as I said a moment ago, my, my job is about taking complex documentation and complex information and turning that into engaging learning content. That quite uh, that can take quite a bit of time to do uh, because I've got to try and turn somebody's complex language into something that I can understand but once that's done then I can get into what I call the fun part of my job so I might be uh, recording videos to explain about those complex topics and then editing them and producing them uh, I use quite specialized software to create interactive and engaging learning material I write and design and record podcasts uh, I create quiz assessments using different types of fun software, that kind of thing. So quite complex at the start of my process, but it eventually gets to the fun stuff. This was a really good question to ask. And actually, I came up with quite a few here. Um, but right at the top of my list of key skills to work in my field is communication. And I don't just mean that because I've got to communicate these complex messages over, but it's also really important for me to communicate with other people in my organization because I need to know who the specialists are in different topics so that when I'm pulling together all of this complex documentation. If I need to talk to a specialist, I know who I can talk to. So communications at the forefront of all of that. The next most important skill I think to work in my field is problem solving. We need people that can look at a situation, appraise it, understand what the problems are before moving on to try and solve it. And that then kind of runs into the next skill, which is a willingness to engage and enter into projects that you know nothing about. Right now, I'm working on a project to do with artificial intelligence and machine learning. And six months ago, I really didn't know much about it at all, but I've had to pull all of this complex documentation together and then turn that into something interesting. So I had to be willing to just jump into that. I need to be able to work alone as part of a team, specifically really because many of us are working from home with our jobs now anyway, but uh, I work with a team of people and I've got to communicate well with them. Uh, a few more skills that I think are necessary. Uh, creativity, big part of what I do because so much of the material I work with is not that interesting initially, but I've got to turn it into something interesting. And to do that, I need to be creative, which ties into the next skill, which is all about an eye for detail and accuracy. And that's really important because all of the work that I do, it's got an international audience. So everybody who's looking at the material I create is judging it straight away for any spelling errors or any grammar problems, or if I repeat myself, or if I leave a word in that I shouldn't have, I can't be seen to be making mistakes with uh, mistakes with that kind of thing. 
the other last couple of skills I think we need, and I'm hoping you get the message on this one, is that you've got to be passionate about wanting to make learning interesting. Um, I am. Uh, it helps me to keep engaged with what I'm doing. And I suppose the final skill to have to come into our industry really is a desire to learn more. That's tying into jumping into these projects that you know nothing about. You've got to have a real willingness to want to understand more and more and more about um, the software that we're working with. This comes back to the first question, actually. It, we're going back to the finance and accounting topics closely related to that. Now, if you're watching this, you might think, oh, accounting, maths really isn't my thing. But what you need to realize is that accounting isn't just about spending days looking at numbers. It's like the field of law. If you take your law degree, then there are so many different areas of law that you can move into, and it's the same with accounting. So what I would encourage people to do is to research types of accounting. So when you go and get your finance and accounting qualification, that gives you the basics, but then you can go into forensic accounting, tax accounting, systems accounting, operations accounting. So all of the people that I've come across, the accountants, these are the ones that have gone into accounting and then realized, oh, actually, I quite like the sound of working with this type of accounting and they just move into that field. So finance and accounting is the basics, but research types of accounting and that will help you understand the different fields that are available. This was almost accidental, really. It's been a combination of uh, different parts of my career so far. I developed my communication skills with sales roles and I delivered training. Uh, in my spare time, I had a radio show on a local station. It was nothing big, nothing exciting, uh, but it enabled me to get experience on recording audio. And also I worked in the finance sector. So when you combine all of those together, working in corporate finance, delivering training, recording, uh, recording material for online learning resources, it meant that those combined skills meant that this job was really for me. There are other routes into the industry though. This was a difficult question to answer, but I've come up with the fact that there are two routes into what I do. The, um, the first one, the first route, the one that I took was joining the training team. And then once I joined the training team, I learned about the software. And once I'd learned about the software, I was then able to start creating and delivering training courses. The other route to come into my industry is starting as a consultant on a project. And when I'm talking about a project with our software, um, it's when the software is being implemented with a customer. So as a consultant, you're working on the team to implement the software, but you might be working in a specialist area. And then as you work on more and more projects, you're working on more different aspects of the software. So you're building that experience and getting an in-depth knowledge of understanding. And then you can choose to come into the training team so that you can share all of that knowledge by creating and delivering the training courses. I think that option two takes longer to get into my industry because as a consultant, you need to spend the right amount of time on projects and specializing in those different areas. But in my industry, what I do find is that the more experience and knowledge that you have, you usually see better financial rewards. So it might take longer financial rewards, or you can take the shorter approach and maybe take a little bit longer to get to the same place.